Hey there, Facebook. Waiting for a Periscope to come up, as always. There we go. Hello, Periscope. Prophet David Taylor here. <clears throat> Thanks for uh, joining me. Those of you that are joining me live, thank you for joining me live for my Sunday broadcast. So, I've got some exciting word to share with you, so let's jump right in with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for the opportunity, oh God, to be a part of be a vessel for the master's use, oh God. And I just thank you and I just praise you, oh God, for being a part of your eternal kingdom because it could be so different. But it's because of your love and your grace and your mercy that we're here. So, Lord, I surrender my mouth, my brain, my thoughts, my hands, my every gesture to the Holy Ghost, oh God, so that what you want to be said will be said through this broadcast and so that your saints will be edified and that you will be glorified and the demons will be taken. There we go. Yeah, it looks like my connection's back. I don't know what happened. I know that shouldn't be happening, but every now and then it happens, so that always means that something important is going to be said that the Lord wants you to hear, and the enemy's trying to interfere with that. But we rebuke the devil. The devil is a lie in the name of Jesus, and he has no dominion or authority over us, so the name of Jesus is broadcast. It's going to go forth, and God is going to be glorified in releasing his word. Amen and amen. All right, the name of today's prophetic word is Summer Assignments. <clears throat> summer Assignments. So let me release the prophetic word that the Holy Ghost gave me. Then I'll give you some reference scriptures and then I'll explain everything if anything's not clear. For behold, my people, I have called you out of religion into relationship. I am a person, not a set of rules, and I've called you to hear me. And hear my voice, for I have come with your summer assignments, and as the bridegroom I have come in, and I have shut the door. I'm interested in moving forward with those that have their lamps trimmed and burning and are ready to obey me and are not arguing with me, but are ready and willing to do what I give them to do. Get your assignments and get your work done, because August 31st, 2019, will be the end of your summer assignments and something new is going to spring forth for September. So don't have any of your summer work undone, but receive your summer assignments now. Move forward and keep in sync with me. It's your job to hear me and hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches so you can stay in sync with me and we can move forward, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Okay. Some of that might be confusing. I'm going to explain it. I'm going to explain what all that word meant. Okay? Uh, first, I want to get some reference scriptures. Matthew eleven fifteen. 15. This is one of the times in the Gospels where the Lord says, He who has ears, let him hear. Most of the time, people think that Jesus only said that in the book of Revelation. But he actually says it in Matthew. He who has ears, let him hear. What does that mean? I'll talk about that in a minute. I want to reference Revelation 2, 7. Now, the Lord actually uses this phrase seven times in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. He says in the uh, King James, it says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, in the Berean Study Bible, it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, now whenever you see the Bible repeating something, God is trying to emphasize what it says because the Lord makes that statement. He who hath an ear or he, or he who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He says that seven times when he's given his grades to the church in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Okay, you can also see it in Revelation 2.29. Uh, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So what's the point I want to bring out there? What is God trying to say there? God is trying to say there, just like he said in that prophetic word, that he is a person and not a set of rules. Too many Christians have <clears throat> relegated themselves to just going to the church, 
put in an offering, listen to the sermon, get sl slain in the spirit, go home, eat some chicken, and it's just another Sunday. So I can check off, uh, check off and tick off all my religious boxes and say that I'm a good person, okay? That's not a relationship, that's religion. And I told you, I've told you before, God called us out of religion at the end of 2014, five years ago. So when you go to the house of God, you're supposed to go with the mindset of being able to hear what the Lord is saying to you through the various uh, offices and various members of the body that he uses. So point number one is that Jesus is a person. He is not a set of rules. This is a relationship, and it's not a religion. And the whole point of you going to the house of God is so you can hear what God is saying to you. That's the point, okay? If you're going for any other reason, you're missing the point. And quite a few people go to church and miss the point. They think it's about form and fashion. They think it's about uh, order of service. They think it's about the social aspect. They think it's about being seen. They think it's about position and the hierarchy. And none of that is true. The whole point of going to the house of God on a regular basis is so you can hear what Jesus is saying to you personally, but also personally for your family, for your city, for your state, for your nation, and even internationally. The whole way to get victory is to hear what the Lord is saying. So point number one for going to the house of God is to hear what God is trying to say, because he's a person and he's talking to you. Point number two I want to make is do not get hung up on the messenger. When you go to a service and it's a prophetic service or there's a flow of the service, you will discover that the music, the psalmist, the minstrels, the worship leader, the prophets, the apostles, the elders are all saying the same thing or some version of the same thing. Do you know why? Because there's only one Holy Ghost. But I have discovered that many people miss the fullness of what God has to say because you don't particularly like that person or you don't like the messenger or you don't like their preaching or they don't have enough of a title for you or whatever it is about them that you think disqualifies them. If God is speaking through them, okay, don't discount what is being said because you don't happen to particularly care for that particular person, okay? That's very, very important, and that's how a lot of people miss what it is that God is trying to say because they have judged the messenger, and they have decided that since they don't like you, <laughs> that God isn't using you, or they're not going to hear what you have to say. That's a huge mistake. So number one, the point of coming to church is a relationship and not a religion to hear what it is that the Lord has to say. Number two, don't dismiss the message <clears throat> because you don't like, <clears throat> excuse me, the messenger. That's a huge mistake and that has cost people many things down through the ages. It cost a lot of people in the Bible their blessing because they didn't like who God sent the blessing through. Okay. Uh, number three, we're going to talk about Matthew eleven fifteen. Uh, excuse, no, I'm sorry, Matthew twenty five one through thirteen. Because you hear me reference it all the time, but it's the parable of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins, and the Holy Ghost gave me that while we were talking about the prophetic word. Okay, it's that pro prophetic word I gave at the top of the broadcast that talks about summer assignments, because the name of today's prophetic word is summer assignments. Okay, and hearing what the Lord says. So let me read you the passage of scriptures, 13 verses where that comes from, and that'll be more clear to you. Matthew 25, Matthew, the book of Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So it's the first book in the New Testament, first of what we call the Gospels. Okay, and it was written by Matthew the Apostle, one of the 12 that followed Jesus. Matthew chapter 25. Verses 1 through 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. 
And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there, not, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Okay, those verses are power packed, like uh, there's a lot in there. But I want to exegete based on the prophetic word for today, which is getting your summer assignment and hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church. So in the parable of the ten uh, virgins, uh, five wise and five foolish, remember that oil in the New Testament or oil in the entire Bible always represents the Holy Ghost and always, always represents the anointing of the Holy Ghost. So when it says that the Bible, that the foolish virgins didn't take any oil with their lamps, do you know what that's talking about? That's talking about Christians that are not spirit-filled. Because you can be born again, but not be spirit-filled. And if you're not spirit-filled, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, there's no way you can be in step with what Jesus is doing. Because the whole purpose of the Spirit of God being here is to connect us to Jesus. Because the Holy Ghost said, he only says what he hears Jesus say. So if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, there's no way for you to be in step with the Lord. So when the Bible is talking about foolish virgins, it means that they're Christians that aren't spirit-filled. And if you're not spirit-filled, you cannot possibly have a day-to-day -day relationship with Christ. It is not possible. The most you have is religion, where you just go through some motions and you do some things by habit and by rote. That's religion. That's not relationship. Okay, then it says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, verse 4. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So the wise virgins were filled with the Holy Ghost because their lamps had oil. And then it says, while the bridegroom tarried. In other words, the Lord may not show up exactly when or how you think he will. And they all fell asleep. And at midnight, there was a cry made, the bridegroom, bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. The virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. If you don't know what that means, an old oil lamp, it means that they trimmed off some of the excess from what was keeping the lamp going. They trimmed off uh, anything that they couldn't use, any part if they used um, anything in the thing that held the oil, any waste product. They got rid of that to make sure that the oil will still be there so they could keep burning. But if you just let that waste continue to accumulate, it would snuff out the flame. So the, and they didn't have, the foolish virgins didn't have any more oil to reignite the flame, but the wise virgins had enough oil to keep that flame burning. That's a symbol of people that stay filled with the Holy Ghost and stay on fire for Jesus and stay in sync with the Lord. Those are the wise virgins that have the oil because their fire was still burning and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. The foolish virgins had let their fire go out and they didn't have enough. So they asked the Wise virgins for some of the other wise virgins were, there's not going to be enough for us and you. So while the foolish virgins went out to the marketplace to try to get some more oil, then it says, the bridegroom came, verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. What does that mean? That means that whenever the Lord is ready to move in a specific situation, he just going to show up. And when he shows up, you've got to be ready. And he's going to move forward. The Bible says, they were, that were ready went in with him to the marriage. So what that means practically is that whatever the next move of God is in your life, whenever he shows up, he expects you to be spirit-filled, on fire, and ready. If you are not spirit-filled, on fire, and ready, when the Lord shows up, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to miss that move. The people that are ready are going to go in with him, and then the Lord is going to shut the door. And then the carnal Christians, the Christians that are not spirit-filled, that are not on fire, that were not ready to go in with Christ, are going to be left out. Okay? And the Lord is going to say, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. What does that mean? That means we don't have a relationship. That's what it means. Has, haven't somebody, hasn't somebody ever said something to you 
And your response was, you don't know me like that. <laughs> you're trying to make a statement. You're trying to get access. You're trying to do what you're trying to do, but you don't know me like that. Haven't you ever said something like that? That's what the Lord is saying here. He's saying, he's talking to Christians that we don't have a relationship. You don't know me like that because you're not spirit-filled, you're not on fire, and you're not living in a state of readiness to hear what it is the Lord has to say. So what does that have to do with today's prophetic word? Here it is. And the Lord showed me this this morning when I was in church. The Lord is dropping assignments for the summer months, May, June, July, and August. Now we're already three quarters of the way through May. There are specific things that the Lord wants you to do in the summer, May, June, July, and August of this year. And the Lord wants you to get your summer assignment and get that work done before the end of August because the door is going to shut on August 31st, 2019 on whatever was going on in the summer. And there's going to be some new stuff that happens in September, September 1st. And the Lord was showing me that some Christians are going to be left behind in September and the fall because they didn't do what they were supposed to do during the summer. That's why it is so important for you to get your summer assignment and be sure that you do what the Lord wants you to do in May, June, July, and August so that when September comes, you're ready to go. You're ready to move forward, okay? Because there are many blessings that God has that are progressive, meaning that you have to finish and do what the Lord told you to do in the last state, in the last stage, and then you can move forward to the next thing. And I've discovered a whole lot of Christians don't get that. So there's going to be a bunch of saints this summer that are going to make their choices. Some saints that are spirit-filled and on fire for the Lord and in sync with Jesus are downloading what the Lord wants them to do in May, June, July, and August, and they're going to get it done. So when September comes, they're going to move forward with whatever God has to say. And there are some saints that aren't going to hear what I'm saying, what anybody else is saying. They're not going to listen to their pastor, their apostle, their prophet. They're going to miss it. They just have religion because they're not spirit-filled and they're not on fire with the Lord. They're just going through the motions. And the Lord's going to show up and start dropping stuff for people that are spirit-filled. <clears throat> and the foolish virgins and the unspirit-filled Christians are going to miss it entirely. Okay? Do you want a practical example of what I'm talking about? The Lord might tell you to buy a certain stock at the beginning of June. And that stock blows up in October, but he told you to buy it in June while it was still cheap because he knew a harvest was coming in October. If you don't do it in June, by the time it blows up in October, the price is going to be much more than it was when the Lord told you to buy it. That's what I mean. Okay? The Lord might tell you to go minister in a certain town. Well, there might be some people in that town that are only in town for the summer or only in town for a certain time, and then they're going back to their home country. And if you don't go minister in that town or the church or the place the Lord tells you to minister, you're going to miss that people and you'll never meet them. And then there's going to be a missions trip opportunity in the fall that you don't know even know anything about because you didn't meet the people you were supposed to meet because you didn't go minister when the Lord told you to go minister. Do you follow what I'm saying? So the most important thing you can do is stay spirit-filled, stay on fire, and hear. That's why I told you, I gave you those scriptures where the Lord says in Matthew eleven fifteen, and he says seven times in Revelation 2 and 3, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying, not what the Spirit has said, not in the past, what the Spirit is saying to the church, what the Spirit saith to the church. So what is God saying to you now? God is trying to give you your assignment or assignments for the summer. He's trying to drop it in your spirit, speak it to your heart or your spirit, or you'll hear his voice. So you will know what to do in May, June, July, and August. Because I'm telling you, when September hits, there's going to be some different stuff happening. And all those that listen to the Lord and got the summer work done are going to be able to move on to the next blessing. And all those that were foolish virgins and were not spirit-filled and didn't listen to the pastor and didn't listen to the prophetic and didn't listen to the songs and didn't listen to the minstrels and didn't do any of that are going to miss what God was trying to drop, drop in their spirit. You follow that? So now you have a choice as a Christian. You can be a wise virgin and be spirit-filled on fire and in tune with what the Lord is saying and determined to get your work done before August. Or you can be a foolish virgin 
and say, there's nothing to that. Prophet Taylor don't know what he's talking about. I listen to my pastor. I just go to church, put my $5 down, you know, get slain in the spirit, and that's all there is to it. You're going to miss out. Okay? Simple as that. That's the lesson for today. <clears throat> now, when you see me bow my head and pray in tongues, I'm asking the Lord, is there any kind of healing, deliverance, uh, financial words, or anything else I need to pray? So, uh, if you have any prayer requests, put those on the screen now. So, is there anything you want me to pray for, put it on the screen now. Okay? All right. So, I'm going to pray. Okay, the Lord is telling me somebody's having issues with their teeth. Okay, God is saying he wants to heal your teeth. So put your hand on your mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, I command life and strength to my teeth. Let my teeth be set properly. Let, let me have the calcium that I need. Let them be strong. Okay, and if I need to grow any new ones, let me grow some new ones because you can do that. The Lord can do that. He can grow you some new teeth. Let my teeth be 100% whole in Jesus' name. For those of you that don't believe it, then don't receive it. But for those of you that do, you will feel the miracle power flow in your mouth. Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing somebody in your left. I know it looks like the right on your screen, but your left nasal passage. The Lord is saying he wants to open up that nasal passage. So I don't know if you have allergies. I don't know if you have bad sinuses. I don't know if you have sinusitis, but the Lord is saying he wants to open up that nasal passage. So do what I'm doing and rub your nasal passage and say, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my nasal passage is opened. My nasal passage is open and free and filled from any clogging, Anything that's not of God. Say, my nasal passage is, is opened right now in Jesus' name. And let all mucus and buildup and bad nasal drain come out right now in Jesus' name. Yeah, see, I felt that when I commanded that, and you will too. Okay? Okay, in terms of casting anything out, what the Holy Ghost is telling me, the biggest thing that people are struggling with is unbelief. You don't believe. My pastor even talked about that this morning. The biggest thing that you are struggling with right now is unbelief. Okay? The Lord is, see, I feel that impressed upon my spirit. The Lord is ready to move in the summer. He's ready to move in your life. But the way that the Lord is going to move is he's going to give you assignments specifically for the summer months that you have to get done. And you can't let yourself get distracted. The Lord is ready to move, but the biggest thing that many of the body is dealing with is unbelief. You don't believe. You don't believe God can do it. You don't believe he will do it. You don't believe it can happen for you. Well, I stopped by to tell you, I believe God. I believe God because the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Abraham received uh, strength at 100 years old to conceive a child, and Sarah, his wife, received strength at 90 years old to conceive a child, and they had Isaac, because God was able, okay? And that's just one example. I believe God. I believe God can open doors. I believe God can make your dreams come true. I believe God can spark your creativity. I believe God can give you new vision. So I believe the Lord. I'm challenging those of you that are watching this broadcast, both live and on the replay, to believe God, believe him for more. Believe him you can have a healthy body. Believe him you can have a good relationship. Believe him that you can be restored to a relationship with your child or with your parents or with your siblings or someone that you've fallen out with that you never thought they forgive you, that you never thought you could be close to them again. Believe God that he's able, okay? Because the Lord is ready to move. I can't stress that enough. That's what keeps dropping in my spirit. The Lord is ready to move. This is for all of you that have ears to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. Not next week, right now. Okay? God has been moving in my life daily on some things, on some stuff that I'm working on. The Lord is ready to move. The bridegroom is here. So do not miss his movement because if you don't get your assignments done by the end of August, 
when when uh, a new thing comes in September, you're going to miss it all together. Okay? For God says, Behold, I'll release finances beyond your wallet's imagination. Behold, I'll release finances and networking and opportunities to put you in rooms you never thought you'd be in, to take you in places you never thought you'd go, to get you seated at the table with people you never thought you'd be with. For behold, I released it and it is done right now. So believe it, expect it, look for it and walk in it and don't hesitate, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow, God just gave me that one. So did you hear that? You hear what the Holy Ghost say? There's networking, there's opportunity, there's, there's money, there's open doors, there's new rooms of people that are released right now. I believe that. So I'm looking, at, looking for that in my life right now. So if a door opens for you to get in a room you've never been in before, and all the people in there are much higher than you, you better run through that door. Okay, Venus and Serena Williams' father said, while his daughters were growing up, that he wouldn't let them play tennis with anybody that wasn't as good as they were. He only let his daughters play tennis with people that were much better than them. And people called him elitist, and they called him a snob, and he said, I don't care. He said, because how in the world are my daughters going to get better if I don't let them play with people that are better than them? Okay? You understand? So God is going to open a door for you to be in a room with people that, as, as some people would say, are way above your pay grade. <laughs> Run through that door. Don't apologize. Don't hold your head down. Don't heave it a hobbit. Run through that door because you're only going to be able to elevate it in life be elevated in life when you get in a room with people that are at a higher level than you. Okay? Now, that is already released. It just happened in the Spirit. You saw the Holy Ghost give me a prophecy. So, I, I'm looking for it. I'm ready. I'm ready to run through my door and have God elevate me and have me be lifted up by associating with people that know more than I do, that have more than I do, that have accomplished more than I do. And let me just throw that in. That's another reason why you have to have humility. Okay, you got to have humility. You got to you got to learn how to learn from people that know more than you. You got to let people that are veterans and seasoned show you the ropes. I've had um, some seasoned prophets mentor me and pour into my life and help me uh, do what I do and help me grow as a prophet. And I was so happy to receive their instruction. I was so happy to receive their correction. I was so happy to hear what they had to say. I was like, teach me, help me to be better, you know? So you have to have that kind of attitude. So that's already released in the Holy Ghost. So those of you that are wise and full of the Holy Ghost, you receive that, and now it's time to look for it. Watch it manifest in your life. And those of you that, that don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> by the time the fall comes, there's going to be some stuff in your life that could be different, but it won't be, okay? Let me also mention, this also happens with spouses, there is such a thing as spouse season. There is a time when God is releasing spouses. Okay, I feel another prophetic word coming. For behold, my people, I have heard you. I've heard your prayers about relationships. And I will release a bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, person that I have custom designed to be with you. For behold, it is done and I have released them to you. Now, when you meet them, prove them by the Spirit. Prove them by me and see if this person is the one I have sent for you. And if they are bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, know of a surety that it is from me. And they are the ones I have custom designed for you to be with, to walk with you in life, to build a family so that you won't be alone, so that you can become together everything that I have called you to be, says the Spirit of the living God. Wow. Okay, so that means for some people that have been praying about spouses, God has released your spouse to you. So look for them to show up in your life. And you're going to have to prove them by the Spirit and prove them by the Lord, but they're on their way into your life. Now, I remember the last time I knew it was spouse season was 2015. And I remember some of the stuff the Lord told me, some of that stuff the Lord told me was rough because some women missed out on having the babies they were supposed to have because they were too busy living an unholy life. So God took the children he was going to give to them and gave it to other daughters. That's what I'm talking about, foolish, foolish Christians that aren't spirit-filled and ain't in step with what the Lord is saying. You miss what he's saying in that season. 
And there's a whole lot of future apostles and prophets that are going to be born to other women that could have been born to some of God's American daughters, but they missed out because they weren't living the way the Lord told them to live. Because when the bridegroom shows up, he shows up like that. Okay? So that's, so we know the summer assignments are here. We know we have to hear what the Lord has to say. We know God has released finances, opportunities, and God has released spouses for those that are looking for that. That's here right now. So I'm excited. And if you don't believe it, then miss out. By the time September, October comes, you'll still be single. Not that God wanted you to be single, but you didn't believe it. By the time September and October comes, you'll still be broke. You'll still miss out. I mean, not because God wants you to be broke, but because you didn't believe it. That's why the Holy Ghost keeps telling me that unbelief is the thing that's holding back. But I believe God, so I'm moving forward. Okay? So, amen. That's exciting. <laughs> Praise God for that. Let me see if there's anything else. Amen. Okay, that, that was the Lord gave me a little personal thing. So I don't have to share that one. That was just talking to me. Amen. All right. So that's our broadcast for this week. Um, uh, I want you to watch this over and over and over again. Because as always, I give you a lot of information. And you got to watch it several times to see the thread. Because sometimes it might seem like I'm being disjointed. But I'm not being disjointed. I'm putting different things together to help you see the overall picture. Okay, so I want you to watch this many, many times so that you don't miss your summer assignment, so that you understand what the Lord is saying to you, so that you catch the prophetic words that the Holy Ghost is releasing, so that when he gives you that stuff, you're ready to go. Because I want to be ready when September hits. When September hits, I want to have my summer work done so that whatever blessing God has for me, we're good to go. Okay? All right. Thank you for joining me live. Um, I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. I took a break uh, last Sunday because I needed a uh, Sunday off. But I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I'm here on the second Thursday of every month with a series called No More Genies, where we're working on getting rid of our genie concept of God and establishing a healthy concept of God according to the Word. Okay? So thank you. God bless you. Have a good rest of your day. And remember to get your summer assignments and hear what the Spirit says to the church. So you can stay on fire, stay filled with the Holy Ghost, and stay in sync with the Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. Amen, and God bless.